Okay, let's see. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Yeah, we got audio. We got, uh, let's turn phone down. It's not on the list, but, you know, it is on the list. Yep, there we go. And um, got lights. We got uh, air. Yeah, it's passable. Um, we got uh, audience. Hello. <laughs> Where did you come from? And we've got, uh, let's see, what is today? Today is Wednesday, of course. What time is it? It's 2.49, 2.49 in the afternoon. All right. And um, I'm a tad discombobulated today. The um, We just got a call this morning that my youngest son and his wife, who were expecting a baby to be born on the 21st, which is six days from now, packed up and went to the hospital this morning. (laughs) So, and then they sent him home. Well, they told him to go walk around the mall. Um, So, yeah. So we'll see what, what all that means. Meanwhile, you know, we're kind of on making plans to leave, but not really knowing when we're going to leave. You know how that is. Or maybe you don't. But anyway, I don't, but I'm fixing to find out. And I'm looking around the studio and I'm thinking, uh, these computers are not going to build themselves. No, they're not. No, they're not. So, yeah. One of my, uh, hello, Bill. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. One of my uh, my favorite YouTube shows um, called uh, Matt's Off-Road Recovery about this former towing company owner. Well, I guess he still owns a towing company. Has built all these crazy machines to rescue people who go off the beaten path in Utah, get stuck in the sand or stuck in the rocks or whatever else. And uh, hello, Marie. Yes, we did over the weekend. Anyway, look it up if you're interested. Matt's Off-Road Recovery. And I just saw today that Matt, he doesn't do his shows live. They're all pre-recorded and carefully edited. And the show that he did today, and maybe the first one, but it was in 4K. Matt has over a million subscribers on YouTube. And his um, his videos routinely get half a million views. He's he just, <laughs> he's one of those people that just, he just got lucky, I think. I don't know that he planned any of this. I think he just got lucky. And so, uh, yeah, it's interesting when that happens. He was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And that's kind of the theme for today's show. Yeah. So there we go. So let's, let's bring up a little Matt. Can we, do, can we do some quick Matt? Let's see. Let's go YouTube. Um, where is Matt's off-road recovery? There it is right there. Let's go back there. We'll do a copy, a share. Yeah, we'll do a share. We'll do that. That's good. And we'll add it here as a web browser. Yep. There it is right there. And it's come in. Let's see if we can pause it for just a second. There we go. We'll full screen it. And let's see. See if it's coming in. 
Okay, what about... Yeah. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. My internet's going. So there we go. I am an hour early. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hello, Gunner. Glad you're here. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. So, um, let's see. So, Bill's here from Mississippi because that's that's my latitude. Mississippi and Alabama about the same latitude. And then we've got Gunner and Marie. <laughs> If they're at the same latitude, they're certainly not at the same longitude. Um, and I don't think they're at the same latitude either, either. I think they're further up the ladder, as it were. Let's see. All right, YouTube is flashing me a warning. They gave me a warning earlier saying my bit rate was too slow. Now they're saying the stream's current bit rate 14896k is lower than the recommended bit rate. We recommend that you stream a bit rate of 235. I only have 20 up and I'm already disobeying the 50% rule. Heck, I'm even disobeying the 60% rule. Um so yeah. Marie is following two Swedish truckers. One channel is called Got Snow. As a Southern Scandinavian girl, I don't get enough snow. Well, <laughs> Gunner said it snowed last night where he was. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did get into snow plow videos for a while. That was pretty interesting. And snow blowers. Yep. And then, you know, once you've seen it for a while, you've kind of seen it and move along. So there. So the reason I was going to show you, Matt, and it just didn't work, it ate up all my bandwidth, was that uh, he's doing 4K as a normal course of business. Further north in Toronto. Holy cow. Toronto. Let's see, Toronto. That's in Illinois, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, no, maybe so. One of the highlights of the travels that Sandy and I have done was meeting Jan and Marie in Amsterdam in 2019. Can you believe it's been three and a half years? Holy cow. Had a lovely dinner with them. Didn't go dancing afterwards. <laughs> Just as well on my part. Yep. But no, Matt's doing 4K. And and we're testing. We're doing a long-term test. 4K 60. And there are lots of things that I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to find out. Number one is, is it, is it sustainable? I wish I had more bandwidth. You know, YouTube is telling me I need 23.5 to do what I'm doing. I'm sending them 14. And um, we're doing 4K60 just because it's an experiment to see 4K60. And I want to see how it affects views. I want to see how it affects the duration of views on YouTube. If you're watching live, you know, YouTube is is dumbing down the bandwidth to fit whatever your need is. You know, if you're fat and sassy and got plenty of bandwidth, then you're probably getting 4K60. Um, if you're watching on your phone, you know, you're probably getting 720. You might even be getting 480.
four hours worth of snow. Oh, yes. Toronto is in Canada. <laughs> I was just teasing. I was playing like, you know, stupid American, doesn't know his geography, thinks Toronto's in the USA. Yeah. Well, at the very beginning of the show, Jan, they said that uh, my bit rate was too fast. I need to slow it down. And, uh, yeah. Aha, that darn water. It keeps the temperatures warm. Practically tropical. <laughs> you guys are out swimming in the bay every day. Not really. Not really. Okay, I see the countdown timer. Oh, the countdown timer is missing. It used to be right here. Oh, well, it's gone somewhere. Anyway, we're out of time. Let's do the show. Before we do the show, we want to recognize our XK's, XK's XK80, which makes running the show a breeze. Yes, indeed. And I still have one or two in stock if you're interested. All right, here we go. Hitting the green button. Actually, it's a pink button. All right. Thanks to uh, Martin K for the intro and the outro for this show. He's been doing them, those for us. Golly, this is probably the fifth year, maybe something like that. I'm Tom Sinclair, and I can tell because it says it right there. <laughs> and this is Streaming Idiots. Yes. And today I had tried to line up a guest for today, and um, I didn't try hard enough, obviously. And I've been doing, I started out with Scott Whitney last week on success in live streaming. And I thought, well, you know, who else do I know that's been fairly successful? And I thought about all these people and I've invited them, but they couldn't come this week. So I thought, well, I'll just talk about the only, the, the success that I know the best, which is, which is my own, which, you know, some people are going to cringe and say, you think you're successful? <laughs> Well, depends on what your standards are. My standards are really low. Well, my standards are really low. So, of course, I think I'm successful because I set the bar, you know, it's a bar that you step over, not that you squeeze under. So, yeah. So, no, I wanted to talk about, you know, kind of, kind of my story in success. I'm going to kind of interview myself. I, I thought about setting up, you know, two, ca two cameras and having two shots and interviewing myself like that. I thought, you know, that would be something hokey enough that I would do, but, uh, Hey, Ray, Ray, glad you're here. Hey, Mike, glad you're here too. And Nick's here. All right. Very good. But, um, you know, as, as I was thinking about, you know, what shall we sh say about streaming idiots, you know, at what point do you, do you pick and say that was the beginning of it? Um, you know, my friend, uh, BD, who called me and said back in 2007 or 2008, I think maybe it was 2008, said, hey, can you help me with the website? We're putting on a soccer tournament down here in Orange Beach, Alabama. And you know about these kinds of things. I said, sure, I'll help you with the website. He said, uh, you know, maybe put a few pictures on it, maybe a video. In fact, you know, what would be really great is if you could come do live video at this, um, at this soccer tournament so that people at home could watch. Well, I'd heard about that, but I'd never really seen it. And so, of course, I told him, oh, yeah, we can do that. No problem. <laughs> Found a webcam, duct taped it to a tripod. Yeah, you probably know the story. And that was the, that was the start, 2008. And the response that I got from folks that watched that was just stunning. Um, and that was the point at which I knew that live streaming, didn't know what to call it back then, but that live streaming was the next big thing. 
the next big thing. And sure enough, it was. And I knew I wanted to be part of it. Whatever the next big thing was, I wanted to be right there in the middle of it. And so I started doing research and found VidBlaster and, and um, started actually started helping people as a VidBlaster reseller. And then we took on some lines of cameras. Um, and this was, you know, this was in addition to my regular day job as a home inspector. I, I was a home inspector for 20 years, inspected over 7,000 houses and buildings, commercial buildings, and, and really enjoyed it. But it was very exhausting. Um, and finally sold that company back in 2015 and decided, hey, I'm going to do this live streaming thing full time. And at that point, I, I kind of built up a little bit of a customer base of, you know, people that I was building systems for part time. Um, my first experience with vMix was in 2014. Um, thank you, Nick Davidson. And, um, you know, we built a couple of systems for um, a racetrack up there that Nick was was working with. And we intended to have VidBlaster running the replay on it, but he didn't like the way that worked. And he said that he wanted to use this new thing called vMix. So I got a hold of Martin Sinclair and said, hey, can I get in on this vMix deal? And he said, sure, send me some money. And we'll send you some licenses. So I did. They don't do that anymore. And we put vMix on that machine. And of course, I had to learn how to use it myself in order that I could help so that I could support them in using it. And that was, you know, that was kind of how it got started. Um, it was the first big, first big check I'd gotten. Um, what was it? 14,000 something um, for a couple of systems. And just, we had a ball with it. Had a ball building them. Nick drove down and, and picked them up, drove down from, from Michigan to, to Alabama. And uh, yeah, and, and they'll say the rest was history, but I want to tell you some more of the history. So I realized pretty early on that um, I was going to have to have multiple revenue streams to make this work. So this is kind of the business end of it for just a second. Um, it was going to take a while for my name to get out there as a live streaming PC builder in order to make a living off of that. So I thought, well, in the meantime, as that kind of builds, let's... Um, Let's take on some different lines of goods that people are looking for in the live streaming business. So we took on um, Majewell capture cards and then later Yuan capture cards. Uh, we took on um, PTZ optics cameras and later uh, bird dog cameras and took on, uh, you know, other devices. Uh, there's one thing that we used to build ourselves and now is built by somebody else is, is basically a, a Thunderbolt box with a four port capture card built into it. We branded ours the Bolt 4, and that's that sold very well over the years. We um, so we had this, you know, kind of this online store. And it was fun to wake up in the morning and see that I'd gotten some orders. Um, I think the first order that I got for a capture card was from Google. Um, and you know, they were just searching the internet and found us, and so boom, there we go. Um, Suddenly, we're Google's supplier. It was just one card. I don't think it went any further. And then we started selling um, vMix software too, of course, and uh, and did very well with that. Sold lots and lots of copies. In fact, uh, 2017, I think we were the vMix reseller reseller of the year. Got a plaque around here somewhere. And. And that was fun. And it was, and it was fun to help people get started. And, and we would do a lot of training and a lot of consulting, uh, helping people go and, and taking time to do that. And that's, that's the key. If you're getting into the business is take time with people in, in a high tech world, high tech tends to be low touch. And so if you can do whatever you're doing with high touch, then that will make all the difference in the world. Is my shirt changing color to you? It is to me. Maybe it's just the TV I'm looking at. It seems to be changing. Anyway, sorry, distracted. Squirrel! There we go. So we, we kind of began to make our reputation as people that, that you could talk to. 
you could call somebody and, and somebody would answer the phone and talk to you and, and, and help you with your problems. And at first we sort of did that for free and then we started charging for it and stopped getting as many calls <laughs> or the calls were a lot shorter. Like, oh, you charge? Well, we're going to go find it for free somewhere. It's like, sure, I understand. Our policy now when somebody calls us um, and a lot of people are getting our name from the, the vMix website as providers of premium technical support. And they'll call and, and they'll say, well, I've got a problem with this, this, this. I said, oh, you probably saw our, our name and number on the vMix website as providers of premium technical support. And then I realized very quickly, I can't pause at that point because they're going to jump in and say something. So I have to just, I hate it when people do this to me, but I just did it two sentences back to back. We're providers of premium technical support. Premium technical support is <laughs> $150 an hour. But we help folks with their first issue for free. What do you have? So people are like, oh, 150. Oh, it's free. Okay, let me tell you my life history. But that's been a lot of fun. And I've learned a lot doing that. I, I've, I've considered it an investment of my time in not only my client or potential client, um, but in my own future in, in helping people solve problems. I'm a natural problem solver. Just grew up that way. Always loved to have a good problem to solve. Whether it was a math problem or a history problem. How can you have a problem in history? Uh, someday when we, we're way off subject, I'll tell you about that one. But the idea is that there's huge satisfaction for me in coming up with a solution. And so I learned how to listen carefully. I learned how to, to note the things that I wanted to ask questions about and um, would go in and, and help people solve their problems. Not always. I mean, nobody is 100% successful in that, especially things that are intermittent. They're always the hardest. But as I developed that and developed the sales, the third part of the business that I wanted to get going and never really, really got off the ground was a bricks and mortar studio. Um, so when I moved out of the house, I was building computers in one bedroom and doing the show in another bedroom. And when I started taking over the third bedroom, Sandy said, that's it. You're out of here. <laughs> I'm not giving up all my bedrooms to you. Um, what was it? At one point, we set up folding tables in the hallway so that I could build some computers there. She said, go, go find a place to rent. So we did. And that was the greatest thing. And never looked back. It was, it was the right thing at the right time. And so I, I didn't mind paying, paying out the rent. Now, the, having started, I guess it was the end of 15, because we went to uh, NAB 2016. Maybe we went 2015. Anyway, boy, how it, I can go back and look at the tax records and see when, when we switched over. But it was, not, uh, it was not easy. It was fun, but I was spending money like water. Um, trying to stock gear so that I could play with it and learn about it before I sold it. So that when somebody that bought it say, Tom, you know, why is this thing blue? It should be red. I would at least know what they were talking about. I just made that up. There's no blue and red. Thing. Well, there might be, but anyway, <laughs> I digress squirrel. So I spent a lot of money on gear, some of which stayed on the shelf and some of which actually years later is still on the shelf because I bought things that just weren't good things to buy. Um, things that I wanted to test, things that I wanted to try. I remember in the early days, boy, I was buying capture cards like nobody's business. And these weren't capture cards. These were all sorts of cards that purported to, be, to allow you to bring video into a computer and would bring in more than one channel of video. And I got fooled by lots of different ones. And at one point, I think you can go back in the YouTubes and see my, my episode years and years ago on uh, the uh, capture card graveyard. Um, all the different capture cards that never made the cut that I tried and just never would work. Some They were looking promising. And my idea was to try to find a four port capture card for under $1,000. Because back then, Osprey, Osprey, had a four port standard definition capture card for $9.95. And, um, and I, I considered it a challenge to try to find a standard definition capture card for half that. And that would be the, 
the Holy Grail, as it were. Um, and now you can get a, a four port 4K capture card. <laughs> the, well, even the Black Magic, the HDMI card, um, is, is right at $500. Still fun. Welcome to the folks from PTZ Optics and Ray B. The, um, where were we going with that? Okay, so there were three parts to, to the plan. There was, the, there was gonna be PC sales, PC builds and sales, um, components and software sales, and then the bricks and mortar studio. And the bricks and mortar studio, I, I had a great ideas of how to market the PC sales and how to market the, the components and software sales, but I never could wrap my arms around how to market the bricks and mortar studio. Um, and, you know, perhaps it was fortunate, but I never really had time to. The other two took off so well, um, especially in the early days, the components, because there weren't a lot of choices to get components. Um, Amazon didn't have them. Um, you know, you could Google them and find them at these obscure little places around. And so we had them and, um, we were a very early adopter, at least, at least on my end <laughs> with PTZ optics cameras. And so we got in on the, the PTZ optics bandwagon as they, as they grew and got great. Um, we grew along with them and, and got great with them. And so that was a, a great partnership. And that was the other thing that sort of stunned me about this business. Um, in a lot of businesses I've been in in the past, the, uh, the people that are, are competitors are very competitive and not friendly. And what I was most amazed with was the, uh, the, the friendliness amongst, and, and even, even suppliers. You know, I remember years and years ago uh, when I worked in my brother-in-law's office supply company, and the suppliers that we dealt with were just just not fun people to deal with. They were always unhappy. Um, but in this in this world, the live streaming world, all the suppliers have just been amazing. You know, ready to help, provide information, whatever you need. You know, we'll come visit. Um, you know, the folks from VMix. Well, Tim from VMix came visited Fairhope for a week. That was a treat. Um, Eamon from Bird Dog came and spent the night at my house. That was a treat. We had a lot of fun. We had a great dinner. Um, but again, I digress. So we had the three streams of revenue. The, the third stream never really cut it. And what I've noticed, we get what I would consider now lots of calls for live streaming, equip, live streaming PCs primarily, um, but cameras too, but, but far less um, piece part sales, you know, people don't call us up to buy a capture card anymore, even though capture cards are still, you wouldn't believe it with NDI out there, but still capture cards are still a great big part of the world. I mean, most of the PC systems that we sell have capture cards in them. So, but individual card sales went down a lot. About 2000, 19, 2000, early 2020, um, I had amassed a sizable debt because my appetite for gear was unquenchable, <laughs> was insatiable. Maybe that's the better word. My thirst for gear was unquenchable. And 2020 really marked the difference because that's when COVID hit. And Sandy and I got COVID early on, um, November 2020, back before there was a vaccine or anything. We just, you know, we got the flu for two days and, and then gradually recovered. No meds or anything. I mean, just, it was, it was craziness. But the world shut down and live streaming became an essential part of every church's life. And so I was getting calls right and left from churches across town and across the country and in other, in other countries to provide live streaming equipment. And fortunately, my suppliers were deemed essential. And so they continued to, to keep their doors open and ship gear to me. And I remember one day, 
it was a Monday. We got 80 phone calls that day. I, obviously, I didn't field all 80 of the calls, and some of them were duplicates. But still, we never had a day like that. And I was building systems as fast as I could. In fact, you know, employed some, some local folks to come in and help me do some of it um, and get me through some of the crunch. But for the next 18 months at that point, um, paid off all my debts and put money in the bank. It was incredible. It was a, it was a boon for me. Um, and in some ways, we've never looked back. Um, when I look year to year on our sales, you know, 2021 was, was amazing. 2020, excuse me, 2020 was amazing. 2021, I expected to be down, but wasn't. 2022, I expected to be down, but it wasn't. It just like, it just hit this plateau and kept going. Um, and, and that's dollar volume. That's not, not unit volume. Part of it was because people were coming to us with more co complex projects. I think they had, you know, they had been bitten by the live streaming bug and they, we'd either build a small system for them or they were doing something with a laptop or something like that. And they wanted a really elaborate system. They wanted multi cameras and do lots of different things thinking on the church. end, um, a lot of folks who were doing things with, uh, with replay. And so, you know, wanted a bigger, machine that was capable of doing one. Um, we built a system for uh, the city of Daytona Beach, Charles, that's you, and um, capable of supporting 16 inputs and do an instant replay for eight, for eight cameras um, and just blew it up. It was, it was amazing. It was hugely expensive, um, but they didn't want a TriCaster. They wanted a vMix PC. And so we we were able to do that for them. And in other places we've done, you know, multiple P PCs and not relied just heavily on one so, so well. And in, uh, in other places, still other places, uh, we build duplicate systems. So if one goes down, you've got one exactly like it that's, that's on and ready to go right next to it. Um, and so the systems that we began to build became more sophisticated and the price tag went up. So we probably aren't building as many as we did during, during the COVID years, but they're, they're more complex and, and they're higher dollar. Um, and it's been a ton of fun, a ton of fun. Um, is, it, is it success? Well, from a business standpoint, sure, sure. You know, you have a business, you make a profit, you have success. But the real success came with the streaming idiots one morning oh no 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 not back in 2012 july 2012 july might even been july 12th 2012 we did our first live stream under the name that vid blaster guy because i was a vid blaster reseller at the time and it didn't take long for me to realize that the name was limiting because it really you know, if, if I, again, if I've got this three pronged approach, um, the name didn't allow me the flexibility to move outside of the bid blaster software, at least not without, you know, not without feeling like I might be deceiving somebody. Um, so we started a second show. It took me a while to come up with the name, but it was streaming idiots. And I thought, you know, everybody that does live streaming forgets to hit the record button. Everybody that does live streaming forgets to turn on the audio. <laughs> Guilty as charged more than once. Um, or how about the guy that forget the, forgot to hit the stream button? I just did that a couple of weeks ago. Holy cow. I said, we got to get all these people together because they got great stories and misery lo loves company. And, and so, um, so we started the show called Streaming Idiots. And then Jan and Marie started the Facebook group, the Streaming Idiots Facebook group, where all the idiots could gather, not just on Wednesday afternoons or Wednesday evenings if you're in Europe or early Thursday morning if you're in Australia, but they could gather anytime, night or day through the Facebook group. 
And they thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we could get maybe 50 people in that Facebook group? And uh, last time I checked, it was over 7,000. When we started our YouTube channel, we started it for that Bid Blaster guy and then renamed it Eastern Shore Broadcasting, which is the name of my company. You are the, the QR code will take you there. And then we had two shows. We had that Bid Blaster guy and we had Streaming Idiots going. And I thought, you know, it'd be nice if we could get 500 subscribers. That would, I would really feel successful if we had 500 subscribers. Um, but let's find out. I, I got to find out real quickly here. Let's see. Let's go to the, the channel. And we've got 7,160 subscribers. Um, right now. So 7,000 seems to be the number. But go figure. 7,000 people. Holy cow. 7,000 idiots out there. 7,000 idiots. And then we thought, well, let's get all the idiots together. So we did the first Streaming Idiots meetup at NAB, thanks to Scott Whitney. Scott was our guest last week. We did our first, I'm looking around on my desk for it. I don't see it. But yeah, and you can't see this one because it's lime green. Oh, here it, here it is. So we did our first Streaming Idiots meetup at NAB. Um, this may have been the second one. I think the first one was red. Anyway, um, so we gave away, you know, a soda koozie. Um, did that 17, 18, 19. Again, you can't see that one because it's, it's green. <laughs> and got... What did we have? Maybe 25, 30 people the first time, you know, maybe 50. Had over 100 the second time, 150 the third time. Then there was COVID for two years. And we did it last year at, at Scott's new studio and had, uh, I think, 50 there. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, to get to NAB this year, so we won't do an idiot's meetup, at least not like that. Hello, Clint and Mike. Biz, glad you guys are here. So the Streaming Idiots portion has become the most personally satisfying. It's the relationships that you get. Now, I'm not a big relationship guy. I'm kind of a, a love them and leave them kind of guy, except for Sandy. <laughs> except for Sandy. I'm not into big long-term relationships, but this really has changed my heart. And to be able to hang out in the early days with people like Tommy and Dave and Giles and Martin and, and, and all that crew. Um, sorry, just went down a little memory path there on, on my own. And, and it really became special for me. Um, it really, it, I think it changed me. Um, and these were people from, you know, all over the country, all over the world. And sometimes I, I would get to meet them and sometimes not. Um, but it, it definitely broadened my horizons. It enlarged my heart in a good way. And uh, it was a big part of, of changing me into a kinder, gentler person unless you mess with one of my kids or my grandkids. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Just teasing. Well, actually, I'm not teasing. A uh, little bit of news on the side here. Uh, grandchild, grandson, number three, is um, on his way. Not born yet, but... The baby mama went to the hospital to have the baby this morning. The hospital said, eh, go walk around for a while. You're not quite ready. So we're, we're waiting for a call any minute that uh, the time is rapidly approaching. Of course, the time is rapidly approaching. So we'll probably have to clear the decks and get out of town tomorrow. My apologies to anybody who's waiting for a system for us. 
there are at least four of you and you know who you are. Well, maybe you don't, <laughs> but if you've ordered a system and it hasn't showed up, it's going to be baby delayed, I'm afraid. And that's been one of the, one of the hardest things about this is to balance, um, you know, personal life with professional life when professional life has got, you know, really tight deadlines. Um, but there we go. Um, the other thing that's been probably most satisfying in all of this is to um, be to be around at the birth of an industry, uh, the live streaming industry. Now, you know, there were folks that were there long before me that were doing it with real engine or real browser or whatever it was. Um, you know, back in maybe in the late nineties or the early two thousands. Um, but it didn't really catch until, you know, the, the 20 teens, the 20 tens and 20 teens. And certainly with, with COVID, it just, just blew up. Um, but to be one of the, I mean, I'm an old guy anyway, um, but to be one of the old guys who can remember when this or that happened, um, and, you know, I mean, I remember the, the vid blaster wire cast feuds, they weren't really feuds, but they were, they were fun discussions of this versus that. Um, and now neither one of them are around in a significant way. I mean, the folks at Wirecast may disagree, but I, I, they put their stuff on sale too much to, <laughs> to be serious, I think. Um, And to uh, to talk with folks that were there, you know, kind of in the beginning, and then to watch other people come online in the process, and people like um, like Dan Miles and and Eamon Drew with Bird Dog, you know, they were big TriCaster guys. They were had the TriCaster distributorship um, in Australia and that that area, I guess, New Zealand and and you know, Southeast Asia maybe, um, and they saw a trend um not only did they see a trend andrew dr andrew cross at new tech developed ndi which became a trend and they they picked up on it pretty quickly and realized i think i think they realized pretty quickly that it uh, applied to the live streaming world really really nicely and so they bought into that um people like dan at x keys who has since going on to uh, to raise more grandbabies. Congratulations, Dan. And he recognized, I think, pretty early on that the live streaming business would be a great market for PI engineering um, and kind of uh, mentored Maggie and Miranda to, uh, to sort of follow that same vein. Um, and certainly PI engineering has been very good to me over the years. Um, you know, one of the greatest success stories, I think, is uh, is what Paul Richards did with with PTZ Optics, um, of you know taking a uh, stupid little pan tilt zoom camera intended for conference rooms. <laughs> what kind of market is that? And realizing the potential to put those in in churches, that's really the the big deal. It's a it's an excellent camera for a low tech church um, because it works all the time, rarely has issues. It, Paul put himself, uh, I, I like to think of marketing as standing in the middle of traffic. If you want to sell something, if you want people to, to buy something, you have to be in front of them. And you have to be in front of a lot of them. You have to find out where the traffic is flowing and put yourself where the traffic is flowing. And Paul did an outstanding job of locating every possible traffic path in the universe <laughs> and putting a PTZ camera in front of it. Um, he made up markets where markets didn't exist. And he would say, you know, don't you have this problem where a problem may or may not exist? And of course, not all of those were winners, but the ones that were, were great. And the work that he has done um, and with Stream Geeks 
uh, with Tess and now with Michael and Lindsay really has broadened the market uh, and brought people into the live streaming world that might not have been there as quickly or as deeply um, as, as they have. Um, I guess I saved the last, the best for last in, in my relationships with vendors. I didn't really intend to talk about that, but that's kind of the way it was. Um, sending Martin Sinclair an email saying, Hey, I'd like to buy a couple of vMix licenses. And he says, sure, send me money. Um, he and I share the same last name, Sinclair. Yeah. Says it right there. Well, oh, sorry. Right there. There we go. And, you know, it's not a very common name. It's not unusual. You've heard of it before, but it's not. I mean, how many people do you know besides me and Martin that have that last name? Um, Kimberly doesn't count because she's married now. Thank you, Kimberly. You were one of my heroes, still are. She straightened out my website. But I got into vMix learned about vmix i remember trying vmix in 2013 uh, that's when i signed up for the vmix forum i think and i couldn't figure it out it wasn't intuitive and i'm a very you know if i can't figure it out i'm not interested in it kind of guy i like things that are intuitive that think the way i think and that's why vid blaster appeared to me because it was all right there once i unpacked Thank you again, Nick, for forcing me to learn vMix. But once I unpacked the menu systems and began to realize, you know, diametrically, whoops, sort of diametrically opposed. There we go. Um, you know, settings, add inputs right down there. Um, everything else fell into place. That and, and, and George Price helping me understand about streaming and about inputs. Thank you, George. George was my live streamer of the year several years ago. But vMix became the secret sauce that tied everything together. It tied the streaming idiots in, it tied the live streaming gear in, um, and it tied the, the, the cameras and, and capture card and other gear in together. vMix was the one that wrapped it all together. Um, and their story is a fascinating story. Sometime we need to get we get Tim on the show and Martin on the show again to, to tell their story, but can't say enough things about vMix and Martin and Tim and, and now, you know, Heath and, and Greg and Kimberly for what they have done for me um, and for the community that they built and that they helped me build with, with you guys. Um, it's been a treat. It's been a treat and it's been a success. It's been a success as a business, um, in that kind of, uh, professional pride kind of, you know, fulfilling a need within you professionally. It's been a super success for me. And then it, all the other relationships, uh, were just the, 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 the icing on the cake. I was going to say the cream in the coffee, but not everybody likes cream in their coffee, but everybody likes icing on cake. So that's it. That is my success story, as it were, with the world of, of live streaming um, through streaming idiots and all the other gear. What do you think? If you're watching this on YouTube later, I'd love to hear where you bumped into me first or where you bumped into PTZ Optics and Paul or Vmix and Martin or any of those. I um, would love to hear some of those stories. But we're going to flip it over to the post show now and see what questions you might have. So again, hat tip to Martin K for this just really awesome, bizarre outro.
Well, there we go. Well, thank you, Biz. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's see what you guys are up to. Nick took a one-on-one -on -one class. That's right. I remember that. And I remember Mike was in. Mike, you showed up for more than one session of classes, didn't you? That was it. Gear acquisition syndrome. Had to have it. Had to have it. And I can I can tell you for sure that Clint did suffer for that and still does. <laughs> Mike, you're very kind. Thank you. It has been a lot of fun. Yeah, well, that wasn't always the case. No teasing, but yeah. Yeah, she's been wonderfully supportive during this whole process. She never, she never, in, she never, what did she never do? She never got in the way. Um, she, she said, you're going to do what you're going to do and you go do it. And that was it. That was it. Welcome, Ray B. Glad you're here. And glad you are here from PTZ Optics. Yes, indeed. And Mike today did a did auto 720 switch to 1080. And you could try 4K. So yeah, that's it. And Bill attended, I t Bill, you were in more than one of the offerings for classes, as I recall. You would come back and come back and come back. We're putting another um, VMix 101 class together for the late spring. I'll get you guys dates when the time comes. Welcome, Ed. Glad you are here. And Biz showed up too. Yep. Well, there you go. There you go. So what's the future? That's interesting. We might have to do that as a, as a round for, you know, once we get all these success stories in, we've got some really cool folks. I'm not going to tell you their names because I want them to be a little bit of a surprise, but we've got some really cool folks lined up. We just, can't get dates for sure dates yet because they're so busy being successful um but their stories are really really great and where i probably oh excuse me i'm boring myself but where i probably need to end it with them is what's next where do you go from here you know where do you go from here um let's see ed just got here and Ed, you can you can watch the rest of this part live, and then you can just take the little little red dot. I guess it's probably right down here, and just pull it back to the beginning of the show if you want to, or you can wait until it processes it, and then um, and and then you can watch it again. YouTube will, uh, I think, have a standard definition version ready just like that, and then they'll begin to re-encode it in the other other resolutions. Um, Ed took the one-on-one -on -one class also. Great. Thank you. Glad. Glad you did. I'm glad you enjoyed it. What's next for me? That's the thing. That's the big question. What is next for me? Um, more of the same. I continue to enjoy this show. And, you know, you guys continue to bless me by showing up. Um, and you know, maybe you're taking a nap, 
but your your names show up in the chat on occasion and and I, I can monitor in YouTube how many folks are watching live. And that kind of helps me uh, to understand where the audience is. And, you know, if the audience is beginning to uh, drift away to other places. Um, it's also interesting sometimes to see oops, other people that are in the same kind of in the same field, live streaming or live streaming gear or equipment sales or or, you know, vendors for that. Um, sometimes they'll they'll pop in and do a Wednesday afternoon show either before or after this show, or sometimes right on top of this show, um, which I always think is kind of funny. And, um, and sometimes they're never seen again. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. It just, it just wasn't a good time. It just wasn't a good time for them. But what's next for me? Um, continue to explore NDI. I think I think we haven't we haven't explored the depths of NDI yet, and all the different ways that um, it can be made to make our life um, simpler as live streamers. Um, the um, as as a live streaming PC builder, I want to go back through the line of things that we say we build, kind of our off the shelf stuff, and kind of revamp that a little bit. Um, and make it, um, probably make things more powerful. I think, I think I can, I can put more power in PCs for close to the same dollar. Um, just because of the way technology has changed, you know, the Intel processors, um, the NVIDIA, um, video cards, um, and the, the Asus motherboards that we use and, and like, um, I'd like to do more Thunderbolt. I think Thunderbolt is, is underappreciated and can have, um, especially for, for video acquisition for, for cameras as a, as a capturing device. Um, I'd like to see what the limitations of it are. You know, how much video can you put on Thunderbolt before you dumb it down? And how does 4K affect it? That'll, that'll be, you know, how much bandwidth um, can you use? to make it that way. And then after experimenting with it and playing with it and finding out, you know, what the, what the limits are, then I can build below those limits so that people can even stress doing what they're doing and stress it out and not go into the, into the red as it were. Although people do that all the time. Let's see. Did I miss a few comments here? Let's see. Steve wants a date for the VMix 101 class. Don't have the dates yet. Just saying late spring. It's a six-week class, so we're trying to find a six-week window uh, where we can do that. Well, John, that's because you haven't adjusted your clock. No, that would mean you adjusted it too much. <laughs> you set it ahead two hours instead of one. I don't know. The whole clock thing just amazes me. Mike's tried the Switcher Studio Live. Um, sorry, Mike. You know, you would think I would kind of keep tabs on the, com the competition, um, but I don't. I haven't. I just kind of stayed within my own little, my own little framework, my own little backyard, and tried to make things as good as they were, as they could be, and, you know, they keep being good. Um, You put together an official virtual conference in my spare time. <laughs> and what would we do in this official virtual conference? Uh-oh, here's a blast from the past. Hey, Merle. How you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm glad you did. Merle Dixon was one of those way back at the beginning guys when we're trying to get this figured out had a great show back in the day let's see uh 
these people at Hamilton County Television down down here, yeah, right there. You you can't you got to be careful. <laughs> you can't listen to them at face value. I mean, these are the guys that started a live. I guess it was live. Jim was it live live internet show where they would dress up and costumes and hair and, and wigs and fake teeth and they would make fun of anyone and everybody and and their little their not little but their community just embraced it and loved it and um, it was just their own local flavor lovely jim's been a good customer jim jim wafford with hamilton county tv uh, they were one of the first ones to do a ESPN style, or maybe it wasn't ESPN style, um, but to do high school football, to do a composite show where they would talk about all the other high schools games that were going on and then pull you into those other games by pulling the feeds in. Um, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. I love it. Can't wait to see them do that again uh, this fall. Uh, let's see. Greg was on the show a while back. Remember Greg and the audio guy from ESPN. When do we get a crystal ball wipe so that we can see the future? <laughs> well, here's the thing, Greg, now that you mention it, and as people like you, and maybe me, I don't know, to a, to a lesser degree, me, um, we're creating the future. You know, the decisions that we make, the paths that we're choosing right now, impact more than just ourselves and impact more than just the the company that we're doing that we're doing business for or business with at the moment um or the the gig that we're on um you know the the needs that we express the expertises that we develop the part the, the things that we create by putting the, the pieces together in ways that they haven't been put together before those are the things that are creating the future um, and, you know, something that you or I say or do is going to inspire somebody else to say or do something that we haven't conceived of, but they just saw into what we were, what we were talking about. I mean, I, I remember talking with, with Paul Richards at PTZ Optics four years ago, five years ago, and, and Matt Davis um, about 4K cameras. And I said, guys, what you need to do is you need to come out with a 4K camera that is at or near the same price as your existing line of cameras, cannibalize your existing line of cameras, and make your entire line 4K. Four or five years later, here's the move 4K. Got one right here. Lovely little 20X Johnny. It could be yours. <laughs> We're not giving it away, though. We're doing the show on the uh, the PT. I don't even know what the model number is, but it's the Move 4K 12X, which is great for a studio. You don't need any more than 12X, and it allows me to make all the, the changes that I want as a single operator without having to get up there and physically move the camera. And it's NDIHX, so it's lightweight on my neighbor, my neck, my network. Um, so yeah, Greg, keep it up. Greg's creating the future. Yes, Byron Lindsay, it is good to see Merle. Yes, sometimes live sin sinisterly bad theater <laughs> from people that have nothing to lose. <laughs> oh, I love it. So Biz says we could collab on a screen, idiots from all over the world working as one to stream something. Actually, you know what? That is what the world of live streaming, Giles and Dave and all that crew did about four years ago, five years ago. It was a 24 hour marathon or maybe an 18 hour marathon where they passed the live stream around the globe. Uh, from time zone to time zone. Um, I remember hosting a portion of it and, um, uh, and it was a lot of fun. It was exhausting, um, which is probably why it's not happening now. 
because it just it was a lot of work and it was it was more to prove the point it was it was there to to make the case um but sometimes biz and here's the i was slouching a little bit and here's the danger that i run into um i had these great two these great tools and i love to use my tools and sometimes i build things that aren't particularly useful or helpful or need to be built at all just because I want to play with my tools. So yeah, I get it. I get it. Thanks for all you've taught me. I'm excited to get my new 4K camera and work with that auto tracking. Yes, Nick bought a PTZ Optics. Move 4K, 30X auto tracking camera we're shipping it to him today and it is a beast and um, nick is going to have so much fun so much fun with this camera and pdc optics has stolen a page from the bird dog playbook and they are making firmware updates that unlock features. So yeah, so look forward to that. And for those of you that have still got the PTZ Optics Gen 2 cams, uh, don't feel left out because PTZ Optics is working on an app that will run on your PC that will allow that Gen 2 to be auto tracking. It's not going to be like their current one, which is just a flip of the switch, a press of a button, if you will. In fact, a literal press of a button turns on auto tracking. But um, did you know you can turn on auto tracking on a PTZ Optics camera by typing into your browser? You don't even have to go to a web page. You just do a browser command and HTTP, HTTP. And yeah. Turns on auto tracking. Turns it off too. Pretty cool. Trying to figure out how to make that into a script in vMix. I know there's got to be a way. So there. Well, guys, got a baby on the way here. So I got to run. But I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in for my for our little fireside chat. Should have had a fire going back there somewhere. Oh well, too late for it now. If you're uh, if you're like Nick and you're thinking about, or like Jim and you're thinking about a new camera because we just sent Jim a new camera. Oh, did it ship yesterday or today? I think we ordered it yesterday. It shipped today, Jim. I sent you tracking just a little while ago, and Nick, I'll send you tracking later. Um, and Dennis has got a new camera coming. But Dennis, Dennis is in Canada, so we're having the camera sent here first so that I can be responsible to send it to Canada. That way I make sure it gets there. Um, so, yeah. And thank you to uh, Auburn University Athletic Department for the, uh, the order for two um, instant replay vMix PCs. Yeah, baby. And thank you to, uh, who else can I thank? Um, I can't remember all the names. I'm sorry. So there we go. So, yeah. Thank you, John. Oh, John has got a show on Tuesday and Thursday mornings where he talks about bird dogs, NDI, networking, live streaming, streaming idiot show. Tune in, John, give us a link and a time or at least a time because people can fire. It's like bird dog, John dot TV. Yeah, it's that easy. Where can I go to see what is part of the VMix 101 class? Do you have to watch it live or can you watch it at a later time for those who can't? Um, here's the deal. 
to my knowledge, the vMix 101 class is the only live interactive class on vMix. You can go lots of places and watch lots of videos, but this is the only one where your instructor is live and can answer your little literal question in the literal moment. That's the benefit. Sometimes you can't be there. Sometimes you have to watch later. And so we record all the sessions and we post the sessions to a private Facebook group that all the members of the group have access, all the members of the class have access to join the group. And so that's how you can keep up on the classes that you miss because they'll be posted there as well as people will have discussions about the class, raise questions about the class in between classes. And we can all sort of chime in and, and uh, have school together. So, um, Steve, I tell you what, if you'll send me an email, tom at easternshorebroadcasting.com, I will um, see if I can't link you in with something where you can see what the classes look like. And uh, there may be, let me look up here real quickly, there may be a easternshorebroadcasting.com. I was going to see if there was a syllabus still on the website from the last class. One second here. We'll have to uh, stream idiots, PCs, classes and workshops. There we go. VMix one. Yes. If you'll go to Eastern Shore Broadcasting, dot com and go to the store and go to classes and workshops you can see the vmix 101 basics of live video production the previous class um, this is the one from last spring so you can see um yeah there's a whole itinerary yeah 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 it's all there um it is there it is. Yep. Got it. Thank you, Mike. The KS for all that you do, Tom. KS? What is a KS? Oh, thanks. He left out the end. <laughs> That's too funny. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I don't think we can birth them, but they give them to us and we have them. Can't wait to have them. Yep. Yep. I may have told some of you this before. Last, last story, and then I'm out of here. This child will be my third grandson. I have three sons. I am the oldest of three boys. My middle brother has two boys. My oldest son has two boys. My youngest son is now going to have a boy. And including my dad, four generations of Sinclair since, since 1929, when my dad's older sister was born, was the last girl born in our family. 2029, today is 2023. So that's six years. That's uh, 94 years <laughs> since there was a girl born in our family. <laughs> when they did the gender reveal, it was anticlimactic. Is it climatic or climactic? Anyway, it was no surprise that it was all blue smoke. Yep. So there you go. Well, Tommy. Show up when you can. Show up when you can. Kent, I've got Kent's number on speed dial because he calls me so much, or used to. He doesn't call as much anymore. Kent's one of the heroes out there for his church and his community, doing great things with live streaming. All right, guys. I'm going to catch you on the flip side. It'll be next week, and um, we'll have some info about this baby. And we'll also have another really great show. So, oh, hold it. One last comment. <laughs> there you go.
Catch you guys later.